views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the staff or management of Worldwide Digital Broadcasting Corporation. We are back. It is round three. Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from WWDBTV.com. And if you're wondering, are they in hour two? Yes, we are. <laughs> this is our inaugural 2018 kickoff show in the brand new studio. How often are we going to do that? Yep. Yeah. And uh, we have the big expanded two hour show today. So if you're just joining us, uh, unfortunately, you, you missed uh, Chappie Chapman of Pro Kick Australia, who was kind enough to, to join us uh, as our first on-air guest. Yes. Uh, for the 2018 for the new studio, and then we also had a Kim Muhammad of Unit One Sports here locally. Just uh, this uh, unbelievable gentleman, as it turns out, is also a, a fellow homeboy of mine from Inglewood. Uh, I went to Inglewood High. He went to Morningside High. He's a monarch. I'm not going to hold that against him. Because he's running an outstanding program here uh, following both uh, boy and youth uh, high school sports here, hoop no sports. Uh, so if you get a chance, definitely check it. It's called hoop, uh, Unit One Hoops. Yep. Uh, I think that's the handle for Instagram, Twitter uh, as well. And plus he has a blog under Unit One Sports. Yep. Unit One Hoops, I'm sorry. Which we talked on the break, and he's going to allow us to um, share his blog on our blog. Yeah. Which yes. is great because that gives a, you know just more people to – more info to read when they go to ours absolutely and uh, he is um, you know uh, kind of concentrating a lot of a lot of the, the the young people who are not necessarily getting some of the fanfare uh, that some of the bigger school programs have and some of the other schools but yep. uh, this guy is is following it all and he's dialed in completely absolutely. Um, uh, and so uh, you know we're going to switch gears here and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, hoop time yes because uh, one, we've got, uh, there's a semi-pro hoops uh, tournament that's coming up. That's right, up, this weekend. Uh, this Friday. Uh, but first, uh, let's uh, let's go into the, uh, currently where the NBA at. We're, I guess, now more than a quarter into the uh, 30, 40% into the season. Yep, in, yep. In fact, um, the, let me just kind of get into my. Well, well, while you're doing that, I'll just talk a little bit about um, Isaiah Thomas was supposed to come back today. He said he was yes, ready to go. yes. Uh, teams Cleveland's playing Boston tonight. You don't bring them back playing Boston? Um, you know, I don't know what the logic is on this. I mean, I thought that that would be, if anything. It's good just, for TV. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it certainly makes for TV. Right. You know, but, and as I'm, you know, just opening it up, it looks like right now Boston's ahead uh, uh, seems pretty high scoring. Uh, it's, well, no, not really. It's uh, 51 42. Yep. Uh, just about the half there. Boston uh, is leading. But no, I honestly would have really thought that this might have been, uh, you know, just I, I'm sure he got a fantastic welcome back. Absolutely. Uh, back in Boston. And uh, yeah, because he certainly deserved it. Uh, and of course, Boston started out like, you know, house on fire. That's right. Uh, and they had that huge streak. But now they've kind of <laughs> come back down to earth, so to speak, which I think everybody expected. I didn't expect him. I mean, especially when you when you lose like arguably one of your best players um, in game one. For, for them to go on the streak like they did. I mean, that's pretty impressive. That was surprising. I mean, the injury, a gruesome injury uh, yep. to boot was was certainly surprising, but I don't think anybody expected them then to just sort of take off. But yeah. um, clearly they had the, nu the, you know, the, the nucleus to do that. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, as it is, they're still leading, but, um, you know, pretty uh, – it, it's really tight. I mean, there's basically eight games between sixth place and first place. Um, you know, in the Eastern Conference. Well, in between fourth and uh, what it would be tenth place, you're you're talking about a one game difference. One game, yeah. Yeah, in the and East. And it's granted, it's still early on. Uh, there's a lot of basketball. The season lasts forever. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be talking about NBA basketball until you know, May, uh, possibly June. Uh, so the se and the season never really ends either. Right. You know, so. <laughs> But, you know, I, I'm, we're hoping actually to reach our buddy Torrance. Yeah, I think Torrance uh, has just got on the line. Yeah, enjoy it. Uh, Torrance, are you there? Oh, there hey. he is, man. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody. How y'all doing? Uh, doing great. Doing great, man. And uh, yeah, as I was just mentioning, this is our man, uh, 
our NBA guru from Atlanta, Torrance himself. How you doing, Torrance? I'm great, Bill. I'm great. Another year, you know, a dirty birds in the playoffs. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a proud of Tyron Prince. He playing good. And OKC found got he had to get a little light, so everything's all right. Yeah, yeah, I tell you, the NFC is, uh, South has turned out to be the toughest division in football. Oh, yeah, yeah, for right now it is, it is, it is. Well, that's a far shot from, what, a couple of years ago when the, was 7-9 and nine team or something made it to the playoffs? Won the, yeah, won the division. Uh, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I think that was uh, Carolina made it that year. Yeah. yeah. 2013 or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, it is, but it is, uh, it's been a dogfight all year long. Well, I think you, we we kind of gave all everyone wins by playing Detroit. So I mean, <laughs> that was that was like a little gimmies right there. Oh, I understand. I understand. Yeah, the only you team we were able to beat in that conference was uh, Tampa Bay. Yeah, and that's uh, you weren't you know alone what? there. Um, <laughs> you know, they had, somehow they managed to to beat New Orleans on the last game of the year. Yeah, uh, you know, which was mind boggling. That, that, that was a good, that was a good victory for them. They still want, you know, New Orleans still won the division or whatever. But you know, yeah. I guess a moral victory if they believe in that. You know, for Tampa Bay going into the new year next year, next season. Yeah, that's good. Well, Detroit is the only, one of the only teams that can go five and one in their conference and not make the playoffs. It's <laughs> <laughs> hey, unbelievable. You know, Sometimes, now they're very talented, and like I say, I've always been a fan of Matthew Stafford. It's just, I think, probably maybe more the defense or whatever, you know, and sometimes the play calling at the right time with yeah. a lot of teams. Yeah. Well, they fired Caldwell, and I don't think he should have been fired. I mean, I, I think, you know, yeah, you're talking about a guy that brought you to the playoffs know. several times. Yeah, two out of the last four years. Yeah, and it's yeah. like. Winning you, record. And you're talking about a team that was absolutely garbage when he got there. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, with the exception of him never drafting a running back, which is kind of frustrating because they never go after a running back. I didn't They're like, know that. Yeah, let's, let's wait till the 17th round to see if who's left. <laughs> that, you know, I um, – Yeah, that was one thing I ever did. Yeah, it, it was – to me, that was – you know, I mean, there were certainly some, uh, you know, coaches that deserved to be fired, and then there were some that didn't that deserved it. Yeah. Uh, but for some Marvin reason, who's <laughs> still live and kicking? Unbelievable. Yeah, the Charles Barkley monkey theory, but we won't go into that. So, so you, we were just talking about the uh, the East. We got about ten minutes. We were just talking about the East. Um, you have any thoughts? I mean, since the last time we chatted, I mean, it's it's pretty much uh, stayed the same. Yes, it's pretty much the same to a degree. Uh, but the Pacers replaced the Seventy Sixers. And the Knicks, they were in the top eight, but um, I think they got replaced with the Heat. So the Pacers and the Heat kind of changed it for the better. Um, although the Pacers do have a four game losing streak right now, but they still at the eighth spot, 19 and 18 right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Heat's playing pretty well right now. Yeah, the Heat's playing really good. When you got out, you look at Boston, Boston took a few steps back sometimes. I know, see, as a some good losses, but it's always good to come back down to earth and, you know, add new plays, get a little more aggressive, actually after you take a few losses and, you know, get that same energy, rekindle that same energy to keep on going. And I think you're going to beat break some records or whatever. They're doing good. Uh, Toronto, they're always up there. But um, I just want to see what they do in the playoffs. Cleveland, they're looking like they're going to be a force like always. Detroit is at number four. They're looking good. The Wizards, I think the Wizards are a very talented team. I just think that there's still something missing. I'll have to see what they do in the playoffs. And the, as far as the Bucks, I still like the Bucks. The Bucks are a deadly team. It's, it's, it's still kind of early for them as well, but with them having Giannis and Bledsoe and what, what's my what name? Uh, the good shooter, the good shooter. What's his name? Uh, Middleton. They'll be all right. I think they're going to be all right. So I'm looking at the the road re, uh, records in the East. There's only one team with a winning road record, and that's Boston Celtics. That that's yeah, kind of sh- surprising to me. That just kind of goes to show. I mean, the East doesn't doesn't win as much as home. Then when you look at the West, there's some there's at least five teams that have winning records. You know, so right. Yeah, because I see uh, what's 
Boston is what fourteen to five on the road. Toronto is eleven and nine, but that's like not truly winning that. Even though they're over above five hundred on the road, but fourteen to five is a guarantee. A team that's playing good on the road. Yeah, yeah. But look at the Raptors' road record. I mean, home record, fourteen and one. Yeah, I mean, they don't just, lose at home. Yeah. It's dominant. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, they don't lose at home. They don't. Not like that. Yeah, are you surprised by uh, some of the teams that are? Uh, at, well, I know you're surprised about Atlanta, but are you surprised by some of the teams that are you know really struggling in the East? Yes, uh, I'm surprised honestly at uh, the Charlotte Hornets because I think they're pretty. Got a pretty good squad down there. I like Kimball Walker. I like Dwight Alistair. I think he's still a good double double. You know, he ain't got to get a whole lot of points, but he's a good presence. I don't know if it's the coaching or maybe it's just the chemistry. Uh, Hawks, I know they playing for a draft pick. Everybody know that. So, <laughs> and <laughs> that's, that's not a secret. It's like always talked about on the radio down here through conversations, Starbucks, Walmart, wherever everybody know they playing for uh, a draft pick. So it's okay. We need some help. And go. I thought Philly, well, Philly's still early. I like Philly. I like Ben Simmons and jo- Joel and B. I'm very impressed by MB, I think. I think they're, they're solid. But they're, they're at, what, what, what position? They're at 10th right now. Yeah, I, I think that Philly team, the the more that they get seasoned, uh, the Simmons, you know, really gets his feet wet, you know, because he's, he's, you know, he's a second-year player. He missed the entire first year. Yeah. You know, so this is really his rookie season. Well, when you think about yeah, it, yeah. they're they're in 10th place now, but they're two games out of 4th. Yeah. You know, so it's not sure. like that any of the teams in the East are really out of it. No, and you know, and I'm not trying to right. jinx anybody, but you know, the the a lot of these teams are just one injury away from either, you know, crashing or 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 at least coming back down to earth. Absolutely. True. Well, true. True indeed. Speaking of teams that aren't developing, the Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, down at, at at eleven and twenty five, uh, you know they're um, duking it out with Atlanta for that draft pick. Um, you know, it's uh, I, I honestly I'm disappointed. I didn't expect the Lakers to be five hundred, but I expect them to be paying playing much better ball. Yeah, and I'm kind of yeah. I think that a lot of that attention, unfortunately, with uh, you know Ball and his uh, his father, uh, I, I think uh-huh. that that uh, that you know really had a negative effect. Uh, and I am all yeah. for everybody. Just I, if you stop listening to this man shoving a microphone in front of him and you know inviting him to these shows, he'll go away eventually. Right. He will go away. Yeah, they, yeah. I, you know, I commend him on being a father and getting his sons to be great, skilled in sports and everything. Here, here. However, it's, I, I feel like he's trying to relive his dreams through them now, and it's like he's extra aggressive. He wants to be a star, honestly. So he's really trying to pretty much. Feel these shoes, and it's really distracting ball from his play. It's, it's really, I think it's throwing them all away, y'all. I think it's throwing them all away. Like I said, that's from the distraction. And the team being so young, they kind of looking at ball for leadership, but he's not really ready to take them there yet. Um, I mean, they got Ingram. They got good, they have great Kuzma. They got great pieces. It's just, a, it's a process with them. I, like I said, I would expect them to probably be maybe at 10th place or somewhere like that. I didn't expect them to be, uh, you know, in the top eight right now, but I thought they'll be playing a little better than they are playing right now. Well, we won't be mad if they don't finish in the top eight. Yeah, well, It'd I be would. Another successful season <laughs> for the Laker haters. <laughs> another Laker hater. The success for the <laughs> Laker haters of the, of the nation, and there are a lot of them, <laughs> that's for right. God's sake. Honestly, I, I think Magic is going to, uh, to reach out, and I think they're going to probably bring in a veteran. It, it's not going to be a over-the-top, a free agent signing, but it's going to be somebody who's going to be able to take control of that locker room and really mentor uh, these young guys. Uh, and right. uh, you know, and I think that's ultimately what they need. You know, yeah. they they don't need that. You know that, you know, crazy over the top. You know, superstar. They just need somebody who's a journeyman who's going to come in there, who's going to be solid, give them great minutes, but also take that leadership role. Well, the one thing that I'm yeah. seeing, especially, you know, with the Lakers is, you know, they, they actually have signs of, of playing really good games. Like, I watched um, I watched them play Golden State last week, and I was like, they, this team looks pretty solid. They kept the game close yeah. for the majority of the game. Yeah. The problem was when they needed somebody to step up and actually, you know, make a play, it just didn't happen. Yeah. 
And, um, you know, Golden State pulled one out. I think they won by six or something. It was a very close game, but um, they they were in the game most of the game. Listen, they yeah, went down. I know yeah. exactly what game you're talking about. That was a great game. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, they went down to Houston, you know, beat Houston, you know, in Houston, snapped that streak, you know. And so there are times that, you know, you look at them, it's like, hey, this might be a turning point for them. Uh, the, the, you know, we've only got a couple of minutes, Torrance. Uh, what do you think about the current leadership of the, uh, of the West, uh, the usual suspects? Usual suspects. You know, Golden State still the juggernaut, you know, champion, so you got you to gotta respect them. I like the Rockets and what they're doing. I like James Harden passing skills. They don't really care for the defensive side of things. I guess it's D'Antoni coaching, like D'Antoni coaching. But they're still solid. I don't know. We'll have to see what the playoffs with them. Spurs never can count those guys out. It's like a leap year for them to win the championship. They'll come out of nowhere. <laughs> right. Uh, Minnesota, Minnesota is quiet, quiet, quiet assassins right now. Those guys, you got to watch out for them because they're really are loaded with a lot of great players with Anthony Towns and uh, the boy Wiggins and, you know, the additions that they had with Butler and T and Crawford. They're pretty solid. I like only, them. They're only okay. team with 20 wins in the conference. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, Minnesota really has kind of been the surprise yeah. of the, of the NBA. Well, I think that I, a, a lot, lot of, of people knew on, they were going to be coming up. I think that they've yeah, really but a lot. More. I think with all the attention on Boston and the East, you know, and and everybody just assumes that it's Golden State's you know conference to lose. Yeah. You know, they were they were a bit of the well, surprise. my boys from Phoenix, man. They're only three games out of that last playoff spot. Don't count them out, man. They're going to come back. Oh yeah, who you say Phoenix? Yeah. Well, well, yeah, this, Phoenix. Go ahead, Torrance. I'm sorry. Speaking on that, Jeff, I'm going to tell you, Phoenix is good. I like that guy Booker. But I'm going to tell you, I mean, they're trying to go away from the Commonwealth to what we just talked about. But that guy, Donovan Mitchell, for Utah is awesome, man. Yeah. I like his game. Oh, absolutely. All right, so we got we only got a couple more seconds. You got What's your Super Bowl uh, prediction? Super Bowl prediction? What, dirty, dirty Birds. We already know that side, so what's the other side? <laughs> dirty, dirty, dirty Birds and Pittsburgh. <laughs> And, and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Okay. Okay. That's, uh, we've passed three Pittsburgh, times, and Pittsburgh like, has been the AFC. Who's going to win it all? Dirty Birds? Hey, we got to ride fire high. We got to redeem ourselves. It's there all about go. redemption. All right, man. Listen, I, we're absolutely with you. And, uh, Torrance, thank you again, man, for taking the time to call us. And as always, you know, you're a friend of the show, and we'll absolutely have you back, brother. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. I have a wonderful year. All right. Thanks, brother. Take care, man. All right. Take care. All right, Torrance Hall, our man in Atlanta, of course, going with the Dirty Birds for the of Super course, Bowl pick. Shocker. Of and, of course, beating Pittsburgh. Shocker. Yeah. But, again, Pittsburgh is the AFC pick. That's the third time. Third time tonight. Third time, third tonight. time on the show, yeah. All right, we're going to take, uh, we take a break. Uh, I think we're going to take a break. But let's just yeah. go. Yeah, we are going to take a break. Okay, we're going to take a break, and then we'll be back in just a couple of minutes, shifting gears as always. Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from www.dbtv.com. I've had this problem. Big problem. I really, really needed a good tax consultant. And I kept searching and searching. Ah, there are so many choices. It's really hard to find one that has all the things on my list. But I finally did it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. If you were looking for one as well, look no further. Here's a really good one. Just use mine. Use mine. I'm very satisfied. Definitely recommend. Problem gone. Thank you. We are back, and this time it is round four. Yeah, believe it or not, folks, that's right. We are in the second hour. Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from WWDBTV.com. This is the big kickoff show, first show of 2018, and in our brand-new studio on East Sahara in Las Vegas. Thank you, John Stiles. All right, and uh, I am Bill Miller, co-host along with... Jeff Belnett. And with us on the line, a returning guest and, again, friend of the show, Eddie Rosario of Massage Hi. Band Incorporated. Eddie, how you doing, man? I'm great, guys. Happy New Year. Thanks for having me on again. We Happy New Year, my friend. 
How's everything going with you guys? Oh, fantastic. So far, so good. And as, uh, as you've maybe heard, we're in our brand new studio, so we're really rocking it now and uh, enjoying ourselves. And, That's uh, awesome, yeah. It's yeah, a, we can visit again. Yeah, well, listen, man, how are things at Massage Band? Oh, man, uh, a, lot of good, a lot of great things actually happened in 2017. Um, we got some people trained uh, in Las Vegas. We ended up getting some people trained in Southern California. Uh, we did a lot of uh, traveling this year. We went to um, Vancouver, uh, Canada. We showcased the massage band out there. It was a huge hit. We went to Toronto, Canada. It was a huge hit out there. Uh, we did a bunch of seminars with some chiropractic doctors. We've just been moving, man. Um, you know, we've been showcasing a hell of a lot. And uh, we just got the best news of 2017 uh, that we are fully patented. The massage band nice. is fully patented and uh, we're ready to rock. Well, congratulations, man. We know that is huge. Yeah, no, it's, it's a huge deal. Um, you know, we're really excited. We worked really, really hard on it. And uh, now we are legal in regards to uh, if anybody tries to copy us, at least we can try to sue them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might have to get finance to sue them or something. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. Well, you know, again, uh, that is uh, that is excellent news, and it sounds like you guys really had a successful 2017. So what are your goals for 2018? Uh, so amongst many, uh, obviously, uh, you know, we're looking uh, to open up our own brick and mortar by the end of 2018. Um, we're looking to, uh, you know, really just expand the brand. Um, you know, our, our motto now in 2018 is, uh, massage band is all about banding together. So we're just trying to generate enough buzz for clients and, uh, you know, massage therapists, physical therapists, chiropractors, uh, to jump on board the brand. You know, like I said, back when we first met and when we did a couple more interviews in person and all over the phone, you know, we're just trying to change the game. I think the game needs to be changed in a, in a, in a more positive way. And, uh, with the new motto, uh, you know, banding together, I think that'll really, uh, really hit home for a lot of people this year. Absolutely, that's good. Yeah, so uh, you know, I mean, we we were, we're always uh, asking about expansion, especially to Las Vegas. Is that still on the map? Yeah, yeah no, it's definitely there. Um, you know, we hit a little bit of a roadblock uh, when we did the training. Um, you know, a lot of it was just a lot of research and development, and uh, you know, just trying to get used to the mentality in Las Vegas. Um, you know. Just like in any city or state, you know, we have people that are on board and then they fall off. So, you know, we're just trying to get um, get quality therapists to, you know, really see the vision and what we're trying to do and have, and really ultimately have fun doing it. Oh, that's great. Having fun is the is the hard part sometimes, especially when you're building a new uh, brand. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. you, no, you're no, struggling absolutely. so yeah. much on the day to day that you know you, you kind of miss maybe it's a chance also to have a good time while you're doing it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, no, I, you know, I you know I thank God every day for you know my wife <laughs> because you know she's uh, she's been a, a real uh, brick house, and I mean that in a, in a very positive way. Um, <laughs> Uh, she's been, you know, keeping me humble and keeping me focused and, you know, kind of challenging me on the day to day. You know, I have two kids of my own and trying to be a stay at home dad, trying to run a business, trying to make sure that they're doing all their activities. So it's a struggle, but, um, like I said, I, I have fun and I love what I do. And now in 2018, the training is going to be full throttle. So uh, I hope I can, um, exceed that on others. Yeah, and as always, you know, how can folks reach out to you? Oh, yeah, as always, you know, massagebandinc at gmail.com is the web, is the email, uh, massagebandinc on Instagram, massageband on Facebook. Um, yeah, just reach out to us. Like I said, I mean, we're on a mission, guys. You know, I can't wait to see you guys hopefully this year. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can get you guys on the table. <laughs> I spoke about it last year. <laughs> well, the good news is for that is in the new studio, we have a lot more room. It's a lot bigger uh, than the last know. studio that you guys came in, so... We actually have an area right uh, to our left right here that is capable of actually having a table. We can get Bill yes. on there. We'll yeah, get Bill yeah. on there. Hey, listen, I'm always up for, you know, anything <laughs> that's going to make me feel better. You know, and, Absolutely. you know, and Eddie, we, we've got a few yeah. minutes, so, you know, we really want you to explain, uh, you know, uh, to people what is unique about Massage Band. Absolutely. So the uniqueness is what we've done is we've, we've 
obviously, like I mentioned, we've patented a holding method and a holding table. What we've done is we attached resistance bands to the bottom of the table that allows the client to be more engaged. Um, along with that is basically we're, we're creating more of a kinetic pliability. So kinetic in regards to, if people don't know what kinetic means, it's more movement. It's a natural movement. And pliability is just to make your body a little bit more aware that it's not supposed to be as tight on, on a regular day basis. Um, the method is called KPT, which is kinetic pliability therapy. And essentially what we're doing is we're allowing the body or the muscles to come to the surface and we address them a lot more, a lot quicker and a lot more accurate. Um, with, with that being said, we did so much research over the year. Um, we noticed, uh, we, we read on Tom Brady. Tom Brady does not use any um, weights when he, when he works out. And it just tied into the method. And when we tied in with Tom Brady, we knew that KPT, which is the method, had to be um, tied down. And we've, uh, you know, we're in the process of, you know, copywriting it and trademarking and all that. So, but, you know, to answer the question, we're just bringing the muscle to the surface and, you know, addressing issues and concerns within a 15, 30, or 15 minute increment. So, mm-hmm. that's great. Yeah. And who's typically um, a candidate for, uh, for your type of therapy? Uh, so we uh, we did research this year again. Uh, what we noticed is we've been engaging 25 to 55. Um, so we're talking about from your prime time athlete. Um, I remember you guys, um, Dominic Brazil, obviously the heavyweight boxer. Yep. Right. Um, from the top athlete to your everyday, you know, hardworking mom and dad to my, um, you know going to be 90 years old uh, next week, a uh, 90-year-old uh, male client. So wow. uh, we narrowed it down to 25 to 55. But it's for everybody. We, 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 we don't want to discriminate in regards to age and what people are doing, but um, if people want to know specifics, it's 25 to 35. Okay, I mean, but, but, hold, but hold on. Yeah. Because you, you did say you did some work on your daughter before, so what was that? How old is she? Yeah, yeah. So I did work on my daughter. She was six then now she's seven uh, okay. so you know <laughs> yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to i'm trying to build her to be a powerhouse there you go <laughs> keep those muscles limber man should be good yeah yeah because i'm you know i'm always thinking about people who are looking at you know maybe a, a type of therapy therapy but they may think that it might just be for someone who's an uber athlete right you know so right. who do you think are the people that are just missing out because they may have that misconception yeah, we, we had a lot of concern, actually, when we were in Toronto, Canada. A lot of folks came up to us into our booth and said, oh, this looks like more for foreign China athletes. And, um, you know, I explained to them it's not. You know, uh, we have testimonials of, you know, just your regular day, you know, blue collar folks that are coming in that want to keep going and want to keep doing their, their weekend activities or they just want to be able to be as nimble and, and uh, pliable now, as we say here in the Sajdan, uh, more pliable for their, for their kids. So um, once they got on the table, I mean, they're just like, geez, I mean, where has this been? You know, like I said, uh, I had one gentleman say, this is probably the stupidest idea that makes the most sense. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. great. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. didn't know how to take it at first, but I was like, oh, okay, you, you like it then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so well, great. yeah the, the stupidest thing, but it has a patent. That's what you should have told them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We we're patent pending then, so I got to give that guy a call. Say, hey, we're patent now, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's great. Yeah. So what uh, you know? Are you uh, folks doing, for instance, uh, out in conventions, uh, sort of like you know, uh, shows that are designed for health and uh, holistic health and uh, you know that type of therapy? Or uh, do you guys do some yeah. traveling? I know you said that you were in Toronto. Yeah, we were in Toronto for the Can Fit Expo. It's one of the biggest uh, fit expos in Canada. Um, we did the bigger one in Toronto and then we did the smaller one in Vancouver. And, uh, the demographics there, I mean, it's amazing in Canada. These people are so fit. They take care of themselves. It's amazing. Um, and then out here, uh, in California, we're doing, uh, we're traveling to Sacramento next week to do a fit expo. And then in June, um, we're going to be doing the biggest massage expo in the world in, uh, Orlando, Florida. So that's going to really kind of propel us to really showcase what we're doing to nationwide, worldwide massage therapists and chiropractors. So we're really excited about that. That's awesome. 
That is, uh, I mean, you know, my goodness, uh, you know, you That's guys are... be exciting to yeah. think you're about to go, like, worldwide in, in, a, in something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's the plan. I mean, amongst other things, I mean, you know, it's, you know, we've, we've barely been in business. It'll be two years in April, officially. And, uh, you know, we're making a lot of ground. And, I, you know, just like any business, I mean, I think we all know that, you know, it takes a while to see the financial gain. But right now we're seeing an interest gain. And I think that's the biggest part of it is that once people have an interest and once people, once people get... Get, to not get an understanding of what this can do for them, yeah. then that financial gain comes later. And, I, you know, we're, we're accepting that. You know, all of us have families, and we understand that, you know, we have to make money, but without people understanding what this does, the financial, the financial gain that won't be there. So um, that's why we're going to go, you know, uh, that's why we've been international. Um, that's why we're going to go to Orlando and, you know, just kind of lay the cards on the, de- uh, on the, on the deck and, just run with it, man. Nice. And like I said, we're on a mission, man. We're on a mission. Well, when you guys uh, sat down and put this together, did you see yourself uh, where you're at here now, you know, January 3rd, 2018? No, you know what? I'll be honest. Uh, I-, I never even thought I'd be on a radio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's I mean, TV, I'm, I'm man. It's TV. Completely honest. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's a, it's a running joke in my family it, with my mom and my dad. You know, they said, when I told them I was going to go to Toronto, Canada, they're like, are you sure they allow Puerto Ricans up there? Because I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Wow. wow. <laughs> so, you know, when I got back safely, I was like, oh, I guess they do. So, there you, um, go. Then, you know, then heading to Vancouver, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll be fine. But, um, <laughs> you know, to answer the question, I, I'm just, I'm just riding this wave. You know, we're both riding this wave. You know, Sylvester's been a, been a hell of, hell of a backup in regards to doing this the, the legalities of all this and doing the patent and making sure all that and the amending it, it, there's a lot of work behind it you know oh I, yeah you know, oh, we get it the, yes yes the manual part but um you know without that guy i mean I, he has patience the lore and i don't so that's why he does all the back end <laughs> stuff so yeah um but uh, you know no i mean to answer the question i don't mean to go on a tangent but uh, no I, I i didn't i didn't see this I didn't see me going to, like I said, Toronto, Canada, Vancouver, doing seminars for, you know, chiropractic, chiropractors and doctors. I did. And now that it's, you know, coming to fruition, and now that I have people on Instagram and Facebook messaging me, hey, you know, are you guys training? Are you guys doing this? When is the next training? How are you guys doing it? It kind of just, you know, enlightens the whole entire fact that, you know, people are seeing the big picture. And once we get that brand, to be legitimately international and worldwide. I mean, I can only imagine. It, it's going to be pretty pretty amazing. That's, that's beautiful. Well, we can definitely hear the uh, and feel the energy. And you're coming through the phone, buddy. And... Uh uh, we, we really that. applaud you. Uh, I mean, you know, you guys are, you know, you're you're into it, and it plus it, you know, it's beneficial, you know. So, and yeah. you can't say enough about that. No, no, not at all. I mean, like I said, I, I really, I really hope that this year we can, um, you know, really get really literally and uh, you know seriously get you guys on the table so you guys can really truly understand what this does. Um, I just had a client uh, yesterday. I'm sorry. Um, on the first day of 2018, uh, give me a call and say, hey, you know, I'm leaving Australia for a 17-hour flight. Can you come by and uh, work on me before I leave? Uh, and I said, absolutely. I worked on him. You know, we did a lot of hip stuff. And uh, to my to my surprise, you know, he texted me um, earlier this afternoon, and he says, I don't know what the hell you did, <laughs> but I have not been, I have not felt any pain from the plane ride there and the plane ride back. And that's it was just great. one session. And that is, and, uh, yeah, that's a testimonial, man. I mean, that's... Oh, a, yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. I told him, can you please write it down? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Please post it somewhere. That's right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, well, I mean, well, you know, it's those little things, too, you know. I mean, it, it, it's, like I said, I, I really I really want you guys, you know, you guys both to really, you know, enjoy and really get the, the facets of it all. And, you know, again, like I tell you guys all the time, we really appreciate you guys with all the support and all the love and the opportunities on the radio, it, it means a lot to us. It means a lot to me coming from a kid that didn't have much. Um, you know, it really does mean a lot. So I just want to pay it back, you know, fully to get you guys on the table for, you know, for a session and, you know, really get you guys to understand what this can do. 
I'm Sold. Living, you've living. got it. We are. Yeah. You, <laughs> you, you, you come here and you've got the table. One of us is going to get on it. That's for sure. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, John, yeah, said John, John he's There's up for it as well. He's got his hand up. You yeah. know, he was, a, he was hey, in your painting. Hey, no, we did, so. Yeah. Well, listen, we've only absolutely. got a minute left, but we want to put a couple of quick questions to you. And that sure. is with regard to the upcoming uh, football playoffs in the Super Bowl. We need your NFC, your AFC pick and who's going to win it all. Uh, well, I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan, so those guys are out, right? Yeah, but, well, uh, that's sad. <laughs> uh, I am not a Rams fan. I, I uh, Man, you know, I just really see um, the Patriots going there again. Yeah. Um, and uh, who's in the, oh, man, who's in the AFC, NFC? Can you, can you guys name it for me? I completely went blank. Uh, you've got, uh, let's see, Minnesota, Philadelphia, Atlanta, Rams, Carolina, New Orleans. That's it. Oh. So I have the Patriots going, and, you know, surprisingly enough, I think I think Atlanta might squeak by. Oh. Okay. Repeat. And Thank who's going to win it all? Oh, man, you can't go against Tom Brady. Of course. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's it. All right. Well, listen, right, Eddie. Thank you again, man. And, uh, you know, we're so looking forward to having you either in the studio or back on the line with us again shortly. Yep. And we, you know, congratulations on, uh, you know, getting the patent sorted out and just onward and upward, my friend. Onward and upward. Absolutely. I really appreciate that, Bill. Thank you so much. And, again, I look forward to the opportunity to getting you guys on the table and, uh, you know, making this thing huge and big. And, again, thank you so much for having me on the radio. And I look forward to being there in person again. All right, All right man. man. Take care. All right, you guys do the same. All right. Eddie Rosario, Massage Band Incorporated. And it looks like uh, their company is just moving onward That's and That's so upward. great. It is. Uh, I, I mean, mean, considering the, when we, when the, the first time we had them, they were like months in. Yeah. And to see like where they've been, you know, kind of how they've catapulted in the last yeah. like, 18 months or so, it's just so great. It's like riding that, really riding that ra wave. And I, believe me, I am taking him up on that offer. To, <laughs> I don't know why you could. To, to I mean, give us the business. A, that's a good deal. Yeah. All right, we're going to take our last break, and then when we come back, it'll be the knockout round. Southern Nevada Sports News, our big kickoff 2018 show, coming to you from our new studio on East Sahara in Las Vegas, www.dbtv.com. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Bob Allen with Bob Allen Golf. I want to invite you to the newest, most exciting golf store in Las Vegas. At Bob Allen Golf, we handle everything for your game. We have men and women's apparel, shoes, golf balls, tees, gloves. Most of all, we do custom fittings. We want to make sure that your game is at its top performance. We have two PGA professionals on staff. They'll be glad to walk you through the steps and the process to get that game exactly where you want to get it. Come on into Bob Allen Golf. Bob Allen Golf is located at 6415 South Fort Apache Road, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89148. Don't forget to visit us at BobAllenGolf.com. And remember, at Bob Allen Golf, your game is in the bag. Crazy Terry here with your car care tip of the day. So it's not a bad idea every now and then to check your battery. If you don't know how to do it, have somebody check it for you. Just a visual inspection can tell you a lot about your battery. So as we can see here, this battery's got a hold down. It's nice and tight. The cables are on. They don't look bad. We've got a cover. We don't see any corrosion. Everything's kind of tight, looking good. A Little bit of dirt, that's normal. But nothing's leaking. No real cause for alarm here. So that's a good sign. Doesn't mean it's good, but at least visually we know that it's intact. Okay, so we're looking at a battery here that shows signs of corrosion. We want to test that battery to make sure it's good. Usually when they're getting like this, there's going to be a problem leaking some acid at the top. We ran the test and we find out it's 396 cold cranking amps, but the battery requires 650. So it's just not enough. The battery is going to go soon. Better to know now than later. Okay, so the benefits of checking the cable is because this cable's rotted out. What we'll find is this is the problem, not the battery. So it'll save you from buying a battery, still having the nose start, only to find out that it's a cable. This type of corrosion is common in diesels. Okay, so we're getting ready to jump the car, but we have to have some battery cables. And we have to check those too before we hook them up to the battery. So here we have our standard set of battery cables. We just look them over, see if the ends are frayed, if everything's connected all right. Everything looks good here. Wouldn't hurt to check the rest of the cable just to make sure the dog didn't get it and chew it up. 
We have red and black. Red's positive, black's negative. You always want to hook the positive up first and then the negative. And I'll show you how that's done right now. Keep these off to the side so they're not touching each other. Hook up your positive. You can find that right here by the plus sign, the negative sign. Plus is positive, red. Make sure that's securely hooked up. Keeping these away from each other, hook up your negative cable. Just got to fight it on there, figure out a way to get it. Wiggle it a little bit so it ensures a good connection. Now you're transferring voltage. If I hit these two together, we're going to spark. Kind of want to avoid that. Won't kill you. Kind of fun. A lot of people think if they can turn the headlights on, the battery's fine. That's not always the case. It takes very little amperage to turn a light on, but it takes a lot of amperage to start the starter. I recommend checking the charging system every oil change. At Sun Valley Automotive, there's never a charge for that. This is Crazy Terry with your car care tip of the day. We are back for the knockout round. Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from WWDBTV.com. My name is Bill Miller along with Jeff Belknap. And with us, a longtime friend, and it's been a long time since you've been here, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> but we're glad you could be here in the brand new studio. Yeah, it's great. Dr. Robert Donatelli. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I have the uh, Modern Athletic Science. You know, your physical therapy and sports group. Mm -hmm. And also just you know, known to us kindly as Dr. Bob. Right. Or and <laughs> in terms of some of your patients, Bobby D. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so how have you been? Good. We opened up a, you know, a new office over on Sahara, 70, 7229 Sahara, and uh, on the west side. <clears throat> and we've been open on um, <laughs> uh, the east side. It's a, it's a far shot from exactly, where we're yeah. at. <laughs> well, um, but um, it's been going really well. We're open, we'll be open two years in April. And uh, a lot of interesting patients. So it's always good seeing a number of patients, you know. Yeah. Mostly, uh, you know, orthopedic and sports. <clears throat> and I feel like, um, you know, reputation's growing. It's, it's, it's good. Yeah, well, you know, you've uh, you've been really uh, nice to you know have some of your clients uh, you know Come call on. in yeah, before, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, and a uh, number of uh, current, but as well as uh, retired athletes, right? Uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's clearly a business that um, there is obviously a need for. Yeah, but you also work with a lot of young people as well. Oh yeah, I think I, I think um, my most exciting thing is to get a young athlete uh, better so they can get a scholarship or you know move on with their with their lives in a very positive way and i have uh, been working with a number of uh, athletes from gorman you know they have some really good athletes over there um, that they do yeah uh, so, that they do yeah yeah and it's uh it covers just about every sport over there too oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah so you know I, like i said I've, I've worked with just about every sport i've worked with a, a bunch of volleyball kids this past year in club volleyball Pretty serious in this town, volleyball. Yeah, <laughs> let him oh, know yeah. that. Yeah. And so, and then, uh, and hockey. And so, we're we are our, the official uh, physical therapy group for the UNLV hockey team. Wow! Yeah, outstanding. And they put together a uh, concussion post concussion program. Uh, really glad to see that. Yeah, so they're they're doing great. You know, they went to uh, D one club this year. Yeah, and they're doing great. Actually, great record. Haven't been playing home too much, or I've been out of town when they've been home, so I haven't seen too many games. <laughs> but we see the kids, you know, that get injured, uh, basically. And um, so, and I have a couple other kids with hockey, really interesting, uh, you know, you know, treatment of them uh, is a little bit different in terms of the head concussions, but we were able to get some kids back really quick last year. Mm -hmm. and, and safely, not just quick. Just get safely. them back yeah. in. Yeah. Because the head concussions, you know, that's a big issue these days, and... Uh, this clearly been shown head concussion causes uh, imbalance, you know, poor, poor balance, poor ocular vision. And uh, there's st several studies have in indicated that injury rates rise dramatically after concussions and mostly ACL tears and ankle sprains, which are all related to balance issues. So, you, so I think it's becoming a little more clear that there's more to do following a concussion than just rest and let your brain, you know, calm down. Yeah. Um, there's the neck. Uh, we had one kid last year who got a head concussion. It was more like a whiplash injury, actually. 
So I treated his, his cervical spine, his neck, and then we worked on uh, his balance issues. I mean, he was back in, um, literally in three, four weeks, he was back on the ice. Nice. So it's, uh, it's a, I, I, that's one of my passions lately is, is looking at that, those aspects of the concussion and getting more, doing more than just rest. Because you can treat the neck, which is oftentimes involved. You can right. treat the vestibular system, which is your inner ear. Uh, it has to do with ocular motor function, like I did with Dan, Dan Ugla. Yeah, mm -hmm. remember that story. Yeah, and um, so it's really been uh, kind of uh, rewarding in that respect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um, uh, this year, and uh, you know, and I mean, it really, it's been kind of a focal point for the last couple of years. But I think this year in the NFL. Uh, it seems like there's been, you know, an increased awareness, but mm -hmm. almost on the negative side in terms of what hasn't been done. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, you know, it seems like that, you know, with all of this technology, with these supposed, uh, you know, professionals, you know, at the venues reviewing these. Right. Yet some of these guys, now we're finding teams that are getting, continue to be getting fined, you know, for not taking, you know, the necessary protocol and you know, putting these men back in action again. Yeah. And so, I mean, one of my one of my buddies from Atlanta works with the NFL quite uh, vigorously, or a lot, actually. He has treated a lot of guys. But one of the things they've come to the conclusion is they just the retired players, uh, so they they can reduce their um, level, levels of depression and stuff like that go along with the head concussions by keeping them keeping them active. And so, um, you know, the program I have is really interesting because it's a. Uh, had this little room where we, we kind of activate all systems. Uh, I put together DVDs that look at uh, ocular motor function. So it's, uh, it's really interesting. Um, they have to do something for these, uh, for these athletes that are retired and are just kind of deteriorating, basically. Yeah. Right. You know, because uh, they're so young. I mean, what's, what's, what's the average lifespan in the NFL is what, two or three years? Yeah. yeah basically. And so they retire with injuries, with head concussions. They need to be active. I mean, they go from glory to suddenly they're regular, j just guy in the street. Yeah. You know. Well, one of the things that I notice is, you know, you're talking about hockey, and I was at the game where Fleury got hurt and got the concussion, and how it happened was he actually got came out of the net and he actually got hit by by a uh, opposing player, and when he got back up, you know, he played the rest of that period, and then when he came out for the next period, there was a couple shots on goal where he he was completely off. Yeah. You could see like yep. the. The one time the puck went by him and he made the motion like, yeah. And my wife, you know, picked up on it right away. She's like, I don't even think he saw that puck, you know. I mean, mm. so like it was, it really got down to a point they didn't realize until after the game, you know, that he had had a concussion. But you know, just the difference that it made just watching a, a pro and athlete. See, that's that ocular motor function. And yeah, it's it's a, the body is a miracle. I'll tell you, total miracle. But this little tiny uh, inner ear, which is called the vestibular system, is responsible for your ability to see while your head is in motion. And it's like, I had this discussion a long time ago with Jim Flick, who was one of the best uh, pro golf instructors in the country. I worked at TaylorMade down in, in Carlsbad. Rough, rough assignment. That yeah, was rough, I was, gonna say, I was gonna say, that's yeah. pretty rough. Yeah. But I said to him, you know, Jim, I said, you have to keep your eyes on the ball. Your head is in motion. No, it's not. I've, I always told my players, they have to keep their head still. I said. Jim, how could the head be still when it's attached to the body and you're doing this? <laughs> yeah. But Something's your eyes happening. do need yeah. to be still on the ball, right? You stay on the ball. And that is an ocular motor reflex. So that when I do a quick turn like this, I'm able to stay on the, on the mic. Right. But if I don't have that reflex, my head, I do this. And then I do that. So it's the eyes go with the yeah. head without yeah. that reflex. And that is so essential. So that's not just improvement post-concussion, that's actually can improve performance. Absolutely. Because now, I mean, Dan Ugly was a perfect example of him not being able to see the ball. I mean, for two years, he did not hit in the major leagues. Did not hit. Because he couldn't, and he made all sorts of adjustments in his swing. And basically, you know, he, uh, he came to Vegas here, and I worked with him. You know, the, the, we already talked about that story, but um, he did, um, he didn't do well. Uh, he did great in spring training. That's why he went to, to Washington. But he didn't do well the first month of the season. And I, and I talked about it with Marquise, and I'm sure Dan would agree that he didn't have enough time to re get back into his swing. Yeah. You know, because he, like I said, 
was making all sorts of adjustments. He tried to, you know, but there's nothing that replaces standing up at the plate facing a 90 yeah. mile an hour fastball. Yeah. You know, to replace that in spring training, you don't get that on a regular basis. Yeah, still staying in the box. You, yeah, 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 I mean, you don't get that on a, on a regular <laughs> basis in spring training. You, you got you got people experimenting. You have rookies. You don't see it on a regular basis. When he gets to, when he starts playing, though, he wasn't able to. He didn't have enough time. Basically, I think because he he they sat him down right away, and then they came back and played against the Braves, which was ironic. The, I don't know if you, I've yeah, told you that they were, story. They right? were, they were, um, yeah. That's where he came from. Yeah, he yeah. beat him. Yeah. Right. The next day in the papers, it said Dan Ugla beats the Braves, the highest paid player on the Braves, because they were still paying him fourteen million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's not quite Bonilla money. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, Bonilla got. He's still getting checks, right? He's he still got a getting more. checks. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. he still do a couple yeah, more. But they actually, yeah, they actually said that, and he was, and he started hitting again. But they sat him. You know, wow. they had too many infielders. He said that to me. He should have went to a Texas. <laughs> yeah, the Rangers, because yeah. they had too many infields. He got upset because they. Signed as some guy, I forgot the guy's name, that's a third baseman. And uh, he said, I cannot sit in the bench, I have to play. And so, uh, but anyway. Uh, so you're, you're talking, we were, when we were talking on the phone, you said you had, you're working with a couple other players, major league players? Well, actually, and I just have uh, uh, Kirby. Uh, um, he's a first base coach for the uh, Spoiler Memorials. Yes. Yeah. And so he just had. There's some shoulder issues post-op, and uh, so he's ready to come. But you know, he's got a, I got a cam ready to go to spring training. He's, uh, I told him about this show. Um, he's a riot if you can get him on to come, come out. Here. Uh, but, Let's line uh, it up, man. That's absolutely. Is, uh, yeah. He is. Uh, he throws batting practice. Okay. So, you know, he's got – and he does a lot of fungo, you know, uh, infield. So he's got to get ready to pitch. And he's doing phenomenal. Two and a half months post-op, he's got full range of motion, good strength, and uh, I just have to get him his range of motion better in his shoulders so he can pitch. It's kind of funny. I'm getting ready. Yeah, he, yeah. He's ready to go. So to he can training. throw 200 balls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Batting yeah. practice. Yeah. That's, That's not easy. Not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> not easy. That's right. But he's uh, he's he's a pretty cool guy. Yeah, yeah let's go. Bring him in. Absolutely. Yeah. You mentioned before the show that you were just uh, did, recently did a lecture tour in uh, in Europe. Uh huh. Well, yeah. I, I kind of been lecturing throughout Europe for the last, um, I don't know, 10 years since I moved to Vegas. Started with Iceland <laughs> and then um, been to Ireland. I just got an email asking me to come back to Ireland again. So I've been down to Limerick, which was a really cool little town. This, this year was Italy and um, I, in Milan, and then I lectured in uh, Poland. Don't ask me the name of the city, but it was. But <laughs> <laughs> I know a few Warsaw. Yeah. There's like Braga. vodka. It was close to vodka named after. Yeah, I think it was Raga. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think it was, yeah. Uh, it was close. To, that's close to Warsaw, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Well, I just always use Warsaw as a reference. Yeah, because I well, yeah, I flew into Warsaw <laughs> and then north, south, east, west, yeah, of, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but I have a bunch of uh, friends there. They they uh, really enjoy. I do mostly foot and ankle lectures there, and then in Ireland, and then Italy, yeah. which has been my mainstay for a couple of uh, a couple of years now. Um, so you were in Iceland as well, right? You that was a while ago. I did yeah. three trips to Iceland. Yeah. Uh, it's an amazing country. Its population it is. about 300,000. Yet they were in the semifinals of the European <coughs> soccer. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they qualified for the World Cup. Yep, I saw that. Yeah. And there's also uh, their... But who you know, didn't qualify? No, that's well, Italy the and United the United States. States. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the United States. But Italy missing was... Uh, you yeah, know, that was you Talk about blood in the streets. Yeah. 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 Uh, but... Um, and they also, for some reason, have a, a lot of women compete in CrossFit hmm. and do very, very well. It's like three or four Icelandic women finishing like the top 20 in this year's CrossFit Games. Hmm. For this is a population of 300,000. Mm -hmm. This must be a, arguably the fittest country yeah. on, <laughs> on the planet, given the, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, so it was interesting when you said you went there. And uh, so what was the, the discussion of the focal point? Well, I, I did three separate courses in three years. So I did a shoulder course, a lower chain course, and some uh, some other course. But um, I did uh, while I was there. The gentleman that asked me to lecture there, his name is Robert. He was he has his office at the Olympic Training Center. Nice. And so he actually had me look at a couple of uh, one a javelin thrower mm -hmm. and a handball European handball yeah. uh, guy. And that eventually had surgery here in the states, and then he rehabbed him. So uh, that's why I get mostly recognized for my shoulder uh, lectures and talks. 
So. Well, we have uh, just a couple of minutes, and uh, we just wanted to, you know, also find out from you what are your goals, some of your goals for 2018. 2018. Yeah. I'd like to uh, get more athletes in. You know, get more um, uh, prevention. I think uh, one of the things with physical therapy, which annoys me, is that nobody really comes to us before they get hurt. That's mm -hmm. right. No one comes to us to improve their performance, and right. I think. You know, they said it in that movie, you know, which the uh, Shock Star Ridge. <laughs> yeah. The guy said, your strongest, your weakest point, the weakest person in this unit should be our strongest person. Yeah. And that's what an athlete, that's what I think I'm capable of doing is finding the weakest point in any athlete and make it their strongest point. And that not only prevents injuries, but improves performance. Absolutely. Right. I love it. Yeah. You know, well, Dr. Bob, needless to say, we um, we certainly appreciate you coming in. It's been a long time, and it we'll definitely get you back yeah. it will be <laughs> a lot shorter when we uh, hopefully have you back in yeah, the next now time. Now I know the way here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is a little tough. <laughs> Thanks again, as always, yeah, man, no for problem. joining Thanks us. No problem, yeah, Dr. Robert Donatelli of the Modern Athletic Science. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's actually My physical therapy. Donatelli. Uh, orthopedic and sports PT. There you go. And there how can, oh, by the way, how can folks reach you? Uh, they want to maybe come in and. Uh, uh, you just give the office a call at 702 586 2177. All right. Is there also a website? Uh, uh, we're working on it. Okay. You, you get a Facebook. You get Facebook. A Donatelli, right. Yeah. Orthopedic and sports PT Facebook. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, folks, uh, the two hours have blown by. Uh, this is our 2018 kickoff show, brand new studio. We'll be back next Wednesday. It'll be back at the regular time, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, for another installment of Southern Sports, I'm sorry, Southern Nevada Sports News, coming to you from WWDBTV.com. Have a great week. God bless.